It's time now for the Sports Objective Podcast. No talking heads, just guys who love sports. Here's Dave Richmond. Very special edition of the Sports Objective Podcast as we have our series on the 1983 team with uh, Big Ed, Ed Emery, the coach, and going 8-3. and three. They really should have been invited to a bowl, but there were less bowls back then. And uh, 20th and the nation, uh, very big, uh, one of the best teams of all time. You could argue it's the best team of all time, and a lot of people from that era probably would, but that's one of the fun times, one of the fun things about uh, East Carolina football is there's so many great teams from different eras that you can do that. Let's go to our, our next volume. It's volume four on our series as we talk to Adams Brothers, and that is Calvin, Stefan, and Amos Adams, three brothers. Not hard, You don't find that every day on the same team in that 1983 team, and let's go to them right now. Very special guest now, and guest plural, as we have not one, not two, but three brothers, right, that played on the 83 team, Bubba? Yeah, Dave, I'm very excited to be joined by Stefan, Calvin, and Amos Adams. Welcome in, guys. Thank you. Hey, thanks for having us. Yes, sir. What what an honor to have you guys on. It's kind of like herd and cats. We're all trying to get our schedules, and we appreciate your patience. We've been wanting to do this for a while, but uh, the great thing is we can always always celebrate a very special team and one that's near and dear to all of uh, our hearts. And there's a lot of maybe one of the things that we've learned about doing this podcast, guys, is that uh, there are a lot of guys like yourself that uh, some of the millennials, they don't know who you are. Um, we know who you are, so we wanted to definitely not only introduce the uh, millennials to like the 1983 team, but those of us that know the 1983 team, there's a lot of stuff we don't know. So uh, we wanted to have you guys on. And how cool is it? Um, I guess, Bubba, uh, we can introduce them. But how cool is it to have three brothers on the same team? Yeah, that's one of the things that we've talked about several times. Just uh, any time you see – how often do you see three brothers on any football team at any level, much less the Division One level? So that's very unique, and I know that had to be an awfully – awfully special, excuse me, experience for you guys. Uh, so um, let's start off with with Stefan. Stefan, uh, talk a little bit about your path to ECU and your, your recruitment. Wow, wow. Hey, well, well, first of all, thanks, guys, for for having us on. And, um, Absolutely. Finally able to come together. I was able to come together, man. But, um, but yeah, yeah. Well, basically, my, my um, path to um, East Carolina uh, was um, – uh, of course, our senior year um, there at Southwest Gifford, and and um, and being uh, recruited by uh, by a lot of the um, ACC teams um, there in North Carolina, and um, and basically really um, just you know looking at our older brother Ricky went to North Carolina State, and and was looking at kind of falling out to his um his footsteps and and playing running back and and linebacker, and so. Um, um, so really approach, um, uh, really approached, um, 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 North Carolina state, you know, about, about me and Calvin, um, you know, coming, coming to school there at, at, um, at state for my brother. And, and, um, uh, they unfortunately didn't offer both for, they both offered me a scholarship, but not Calvin. So, um, the so long come Ed Emery, <laughs> Ed Emery, um, uh, talk with him, East Carolina and, um, Said man, we want to. We definitely want to go to school. You know, want to go to school together. And so, uh, so they offered. You know, they offered um, both of us. You know, both of us a scholarship there, at East Carolina, and and um, and the rest. You know, rest is history. We we um, off to East Carolina, the purple and gold, baby. Now, Amos, um, obviously, you were, I guess, what, two years younger. And you came along, yeah, and, and you were at ECU. Yeah. For, okay, one. Okay, I knew yeah. you lettered ECU at eighty from eighty three to eighty six. Yeah, yeah. So um, talk a little bit about um, about obviously you had a, had two brothers there, and so talk a little bit about your recruitment. Well, the way the way it came with me uh, was was it was an honor, you know, just to play play with them in high school, and and, and to follow in their footsteps, and, and always be known. As you know, Stefan and, and Calvin's younger brother, um, and and with the opportunity coming coming to me uh, from East Carolina, it was it was pretty much a given that that that's where I was going to be going 
uh, regardless of who else, you know, offered scholarships <laughs> or, or uh, who else wanted me to come to school uh, there. But it was it was it was pretty much my junior year that I had already decided that I was going to college to play football with my brother. So it was it was pretty much already said and done. Uh, even though my my senior year uh, high school, I got hurt. Um, I actually missed half half of my senior year. Um, of, of playing football, I had hurt my knee in um, in, in the practice before even the first game. So I missed like the first six games of my senior year. But it was already given that I was I was going to East Carolina. They had pretty much offered me a scholarship going into my senior year. So that that's kind of how that how I ended up with, uh, at East at ECU. Now, guys, each of you were skill guys. Um, that's what. Now, Stefan, at ECU, you played a little bit on both sides of the ball, but you were primarily a flanker, correct? Uh, yeah, 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 primarily a flanker. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And, and then, and then you had, and then um, Calvin, you were free safety, and then Amos uh, split in. Yeah, I played. I played cornerback, not safety. Okay, I'm. Okay, yeah. that's what. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, that yeah, I ended up playing. Safety, I, I, yeah. I was going. I was going on the the back book there. Uh, yeah, but um, I know um, obviously that '83 season, like like Dave, yeah. I believe already yeah. referenced, just such a tremendous season, uh, Stefan, and yeah. something. This is this is kind of funny. Dave and I were discussing <laughs> this, uh, just how times have changed with that option offense. You had right. 20 receptions to lead the team that year for just under 300 yards, and um, I guess back in Scotty Montgomery's first year. That's so what Zay, Zay Jones had something like 22 receptions in one game down at South Carolina. <laughs> major, yeah, major, major difference. Major difference. Yeah. yeah. Slightly and, different. And major difference in the win totals, too, right, guys? That's yeah. it. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I wanted to make sure that people understand is the people that uh, that may not know history or try to rewrite history, yeah. Uh, you guys were um, were fantastic. I love that team, and that was right before I became a Pirate fan, but I still knew about the team. And you got a situation where uh, you got a new coach come in. Before we get more down memory lane, I just want to get your thoughts on having uh, the new coach, Mike Houston. Have you kept up with the program, and what do you think about him and the coaching staff? Well, I, have, I, I, I did look him up um, – and actually, I reached out to him also too. <laughs> no, never heard back from him, but uh, but yeah, yeah, I did. I did. Um, um, actually, the last home game, uh, me and my wife uh, went went down to to the game, and um, and with our our nephew, um, our sister's um, daughter, his son, uh, her son uh, played at Lefford, uh, Lefford High School, and um, and he wanted to we wanted to go and. And check out East Carolina, and so um, we met them down there at the you know, at the last game, um, um, and um, and checked out you know checked out the um, the stadium and all that, and then then followed actually uh, followed the change the coaching change, um, and kind of looked him up and and saw his background. Uh, they had John Jay Madison and. Uh, I uh, got a good, you know, a great record down there, Jay Madison, and um, and I, like I said, I did, I did reach out to him. I think it was around him coming in, and then you know, recruiting, recruiting time too. So I know it was a busy, busy, busy time coming in, and um, and going through the recruiting also. But um, but yeah, I did, I did do that much, that much of research on him. Yeah. Yeah, he's uh, one great, great thing I want to tell you guys that was missing in the previous administration, and I'll leave it at that, was um, they didn't want to have any part of, like, history. And I'm a history guy when it, across the board, including sports. I mean, mm-hmm. I felt like you should celebrate your, I mean, the legacy and the, the tra- tradition that we have at East Carolina when it comes to a lot of sports, but especially we're talking about football right now. I mean, my God, there's so many great victories, so many great players, so many great uh, yeah, everything. Yeah. And yeah, right. anyway, he really touched my heart because he came to our podcast when we did the honor of the 78 team. And he actually, oh my goodness, uh, he reached out to all the former players, told them that they were welcome. He said that, you know, you can come to practice and the games and, mm-hmm. and 
um, it just really touched my heart because there's a lot of people that I think mm-hmm. felt disenfranchised from the program, uh, especially when Ruff was fired and let go and mm-hmm. the new coaches and staff really didn't – it wasn't like they were anti-players, but they didn't really make it a point for the players to feel welcome. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. So it feels good. It feels good now to have those folks are yeah. uh, back in there. So what do you guys uh, – when you, your memories of the 83 team – uh, can you talk about that and talk about uh, your experiences uh, maybe on campus? Well, I, let me jump in real quick because I, I can. I'm a, I'm the youngest one, so I'm I'm, I'm the loud, I'm the tallest, so I think I can jump in. <laughs> 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 my, my 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 thing is that not only are you are you teammates, you're 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 families, you're family. And, and your brothers. I mean, you, me and Stephon and Calvin, yeah, we're blood brothers. But when I felt like our team that year, I felt like that we, we, were, we were brothers and we and we fought for each other. Uh, we played hard for each other. We didn't want to let each other down. And I, and I just think that that made a big difference uh, in that 83 team. Was, it was just like not teammates, but, but more like family and brothers. Right. Yeah. It it definitely feels like family even now when you have people that are are. Uh, I was talking about on campus. I want to get your guys a take on this, but I said when I was at East Carolina in the '90s, that was my time, early to mid '90s. Uh, everybody was together. Everybody was friendly to each other. I didn't know people. I walked by. We talked. We I mean we hung out together. We partied together. That's a whole another podcast. But anyway, uh, was it that way in the '80s? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Big old, big old family. Big family. I wanted to talk about. Yeah. As far as the brothers, like, did y'all have like, um, did you have to stay in the dorms? I take it there on College Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh huh. Because mm-hmm. yep. I think now that they've made it in the recent, more recent years, they made it where you can live off campus. But back in the day, I think even in my yeah. time, you had to live on College Hill. Oh yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, and built, 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 a lot of shenanigans, a lot of jokes, uh, playing right. on each other, uh, running from room to room, uh, pranks. It was, it was just a lot of pranks that uh, I remember. Cause, I mean, me being a freshman in 83, uh, that just happened to be a lot of, you know, jokes got played on me by Adam Senior. That was a roommate. Uh, oh, wow. Well. You know, hiding in closets, um, jumping out of bushes when you're walking down the hill, uh Late at night, so it was just a lot of shenanigans going on. That's that's what I remember. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I, I mean, with me being the oldest of these three, Calvin, <laughs> <laughs> my most memory is having our family come to the games. Yeah. And then after the games, they come over to the dorm, and we walking around room to room, introducing them to the players and it's just a fa- a good family atmosphere. It just it just felt yeah. so good. It just felt so good. And and with us coming from a big family, that's how we are. We we don't meet strangers. And it yeah. it was just it was just so good. It was good. Mm-hmm. Well, what about um one of the things I was gonna ask you guys is uh I know Kyle said this, he's not with us tonight, but he uh mentioned Every he said every player that we talked to said that my coach and fill in the blank is the best coach uh, at East Carolina. Uh, can you talk about uh, we hate? That's one of the things that we regret. We can't change that. Obviously, when a person passes away, but we wanted so bad to have on Coach Ed Emery, and he passed away before we started the podcast. Can you talk about coach and is he the best coach ever? I would say so. I- <laughs> I would definitely say so. Yeah, because I heard yeah, that he, he was he could like a he's like a yeah. uh, some people said he was like a the ultimate salesman. He could sell you on anything. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I agree. I agree with that. Yeah. 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 He was a hard nose. He was a hard nose. He was a yeah. yeah. He was hard nose stickler for doing it. You know, yeah. for doing it right. You know, doing it right over and over and over. You know, yeah. and um, exactly. And um, yeah. you know, making you know, making sure you, you know, making sure you knew your assignments. That's and that was one of your. Yeah. You know, that was one of the main things really about, you know, about the 83 season that we, um, you know, we, we just, you know, we just jailed and we, you know, and we just had so much talent, you know, when, and, um, and just, you know, wanted to, in that perfection, you know, that perfection, we wanted to do, you know, do things like do it, you know, do it proper, you know, when, um, of course, we had a, you know, awesome quarterback, Kevin Ingram. And a running back, you know, Ernest Viner, you know, and so, you know, yeah. we, and our defense was, you know, we, you know, I don't know if you know, you guys know we had about 13 guys that went, went to the NFL, um, draft or free agency that, that year in 83. That's, that's what kicked off, you know, really, um, all the scouts coming to, you know, coming to East Carolina, um, so the first time we went to Florida State, <laughs> first time we went to Florida State, they had signs of where in the hell is East Carolina? <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, now, where, yeah, where the hell is Greenville? Where the hell is Greenville? <laughs> right. Yeah, right, and right. M- M- Missouri, Missouri had buttons like that, I heard. And, right. that's, and then uh, Coach right. Emery said, well, I guess they right. know where in the hell East Carolina is exactly. now after we beat them. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. But yeah, but, man, yeah. Just to touch back on on coach on coach Emery too, he yeah like Stefan said he he was he was a hard nosed coach and and he made sure that when you made a mistake that he he, he made sure that he acknowledged you that you made a mistake, but then he come right back around pat you on the butt and tell you to, you know get in there and, and, and make sure that don't, that doesn't happen again. So he kind of he built you up, but then when oh, yeah. it comes down for for, for for making mistakes and, and discipline. He he didn't have no problem with discipline, you know. No, right, no. right. Uh, yeah. And guys, and guys, you've talked about your recruitment. You've talked about the family atmosphere. Uh, one of the common themes that your teammates shared was just about how um, it was Miss Nancy, you know, Ed, Big Ed's wife, uh, and how how she uh, was just how yeah what she, what a pivotal role she played. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mama Nancy, yeah. yeah, yeah. Talk, talk, somebody, <laughs> yep. somebody that had your back, somebody that loved on you, somebody that told you, you know, when you did good and just supported you and asked you about your, and knew your family. I mean, knew everybody's family on that team. I mean, it, it's amazing how much how much information that she gathered from, from, from the very last person on the roster to our starters, you know. It was just amazing how, how much she did for us. Yeah, guys, one of the things that we've asked, I think, all the 83 guests uh, we've had on is about that 1983 season opener um, down at Florida State. Uh, That's what you you guys, uh, before the game, of course, they have the tradition. I don't know exactly when it was started, but uh, uh, Chief Fasciola rides Renegade and throws the Flaming Spear into the 50-yard line. Uh, So so you guys surrounded the – the horse and started chanting ECU, ECU. So tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> My that kind of hype. guys. That was hype right there, boy. <laughs> it got us hyped up on that one. <laughs> so was that something that just kind of yeah. happened, or? Yeah, uh, I think it just, I think it just kind of happened, man. We were just yeah. so. Uh, what I can remember, man, we were just, you know, uh, you know, just so, just so um, hype, man. You know, uh, and ready, you know, and ready to go. And like I said, especially, you know, I think especially coming, um, you know, that year before, you know, you know, they just, you know, they just handed our, handed us our tail and let, you know, and sent us back home, you know, and so, um, so I think we were just, you know, we were just ready and, and just, um, you know, like hey, I was saying, hype man and just, you know, we, we were, you know, we were ready to play, you know, we were ready to play and, and really, and really show, what was you know what we were all about you know in '83 yeah so yeah so I think it just organically happened though we just you know we <laughs> just saw a guy you know we weren't gonna we, gonna, we weren't gonna be intimidated you know we weren't yeah. gonna be intimidated not not that's today real. not today yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and that's one thing I love about the Pirate Nation and about 
if you think about our mascot, where we're from, Eastern North Carolina, with the school, uh, most people don't give us credit. There's all kinds of things there, and it just seems like the great thing about our school is no matter how many people can diss us or whatever, we're always going to have each other's back, pirates yeah. supporting pirates, and even today. And But that team is so special because, uh, I just can't imagine. I, I just don't still. I talked to the guys on the team for '83 and Chuck Norka, and I, I don't understand why um, the team didn't get to, a chance to go to a bowl. I really don't understand that. Mm-hmm. I know it's politics, well, but. Well, yeah, and then, too, you got to look at that year. I mean, the amount of bowl games that were available. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, we were 8 and 3 and, and, and beat some beat. Some big teams and, and only lost to the Florida teams. For, you know, I think it was a total of twelve points from the three, the three Florida teams that we did lose to. But I think it was just the, the, the amount of bowls are available in '83. It, it, it just wasn't that many at that point. Like twelve but, or thirteen, it wasn't that many. Still, even that yeah. point, I think. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I do remember one disappointing fact. I think that particular year. Notre Dame went to a bowl game and they were six and five that year, if I remember. Right. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and nor, nor, uh, the Tar Heels weren't, I think the Tar Heels were maybe six and five and win as well. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. And that was, that yeah. was, that was disappointing. I mean, yeah. it, it was very, very disappointing. And another thing about that 1983 schedule, though, Dave, is there were only four home games. And then in addition, the seven oh, road, the seven road games, the seven road games in addition yeah. to, Florida State, Miami, and the, and the Gators. Yeah, you had you had Missouri, who was who was very who wasn't bad at all. Though they were a bowl team, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you had NC State, who had a yeah. had a good team, and then you also had uh, Southern Miss, who was of course always a representative. And then I'm trying to recall the seventh one, uh, Temple. Temple, Temple, yeah, Temple. Yeah. That's amazing. What was that because yeah. of the program trying to get uh, a paycheck for the program? Why did they have uh, more <laughs> the games? money? I think it was about the money. I really do. I mean, it was something that yeah, we were we we're trying to make a name for ourselves, and also it was just the fact that um, if, if you are gonna if you're gonna you know make a name for a college, you got to you got to go on the road. And that's and that's what we did. I mean, we we were on the road for a lot of those games, and yeah, we got paid for it. But then we also got got some notoriety on on, on top of that. To be the best, you got to yeah. beat the best, right? Yeah. That's Pretty it. Pretty much. That's what the mix is. <laughs> you got. Yeah, I remember too that we were independent. We were you know yeah. independent school too. Yeah. So you know, below, so we uh-huh. weren't in a we weren't in a we weren't in a conference. So we had to, you know, we had to, uh, you know, we had to play, you know. I said, even play that schedule in order to be, you know, competitive and, you know, and um, and get our name out there. But mm-hmm. but I think one of, the, you know, the big and, and Ed and I, and I talk and I, I I talked to Ed before he passed away um, a few years yeah a few years back and, and I used to call him from time to time and he would <laughs> coach Emory would he would always. Before we got off the phone, he would always talk about how he wanted to kill Norwood Van <laughs> at the floor at the Florida game. He he um the Miami he, game. Oh man, right. at the Miami game, man. He yeah. was, he would he would talk about the hail mary to the to the right corner of the end zone. Hail, yeah, the hail mary, the hail mary. <laughs> The hell Mary and um he's like, Where in the hell did Norwood come from? Where did he come from? Where he pulled it down the middle of the field. Where did where did he come where did where did he come? He was just he gave he gave Norwood some names that became you mentioned on the podcast. But hey, <laughs> funny yeah, story. was Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, but that was um you know, that was that was one of those um epic, you know, you know, epic game. I mean, perfect um, Cinderella c- scenarios right there, man. Uh, uh, beating, you know, beating. And, I, and, I, and it's funny because I played, I played uh, in Cleveland '90 with Bernie Kozar. Yeah, he was he was a quarterback at in Cleveland right. '90. Yeah, when I played there. Yeah, and we yeah, talked yeah. about that. We definitely talked about that game over and over. Yeah, so. <laughs> and I think guys, guys uh, uh, I was gonna say this real quick. A sidebar. Man, Cleveland uh, is 
it's finally, I think, turning things around. And uh, oh, yeah. Ooh, their draft yeah. boy, I tell you what, they've got the finally got the right people in that front office. And uh, yeah, yeah. it looks like Watch out. Bill Kuyper gave them an A plus. I know oh, yeah. yeah. for the draft. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Those guys, man, if those guys jail together. If they if they put egos aside in that in that locker room, yeah. from what those cats got, man, oh man, yeah. oh, look out! Yeah. Hey, I, 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 I put I put some out there for them boys to be to be in to be in that Super Bowl. Uh, them boys, they they yeah. got something. They they, they got, got some young talent that's coming up. Yeah, up and coming. Exactly. Home. Yeah, I'm a big fan too, and I'm scared. So, oh man, oh man, yeah, that, that's not a. Yeah, I'm nervous. Thing. I ain't gonna lie. I'm, I'm nervous about Cleveland, man. I'm yeah. nervous about it. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. And we got yeah. a friend of ours, a Bubba, and I know that uh, we're gonna have him on. His name is Chase Smith, and uh, he does a one for about the uh, podcast about the Cleveland Browns. And um, what is it called? Uh, All Orange or something? Something? Yeah, more. some of that. Yeah. But anyway, they. Uh, didn't want to mess up that, but the uh, I tell you what, the Pirates. I guess a nice segue. Speaking of uh, the pros, yeah. well, Dave, yeah. b- b- before we about? move on, something I was going to mention a minute ago before you brought up the Browns. A funny story about that 1983 oh, okay. Miami game. I I was two years old, so obviously I don't remember it. Uh, and <laughs> but uh, and diapers yeah. and, and and you can ask Just Dave. Make us feel I, old, I, remember, man. I don't I don't forget much. I remember everything, but uh, but anyway, that's what my dad and. Some of our fellow pirate friends, um, they had just headed east in in the car and trying to get it on the radio because, of course, our coverage then was nothing like it became in the 90s and and beyond. So um, they finally got – they had dropped me and and my mom and the other uh, wife and kids off at Waccamaw or something to do do some shopping. And so they had finally got the signal – Right around Fuquay Verena. <laughs> oh my so, God! So, so they had gotten out of their car in a trailer park in Fuquay Verena, and were just standing there listening to the ball game. And then that final play, that that final scenario was happening, and they said Jim Woods, who was the play-by-play voice of the Pirates at the time, had got it out of his mouth, and wow. and he has it. And about that time, he cut himself off, and he said Norwood Van runs into him, and it falls incomplete. Oh no! But but, but but my dad said that when when that game was going on, we had the lead and they were just going nuts. Yeah. And he said yeah. Yeah. that they were he said they were hugging each other. He said he yeah. said he said Rusty. He said these these people are going to be looking out their windows, wondering what in the heck's <laughs> going on, what, wondering wondering what what type of idiots they have out in out in their neighborhood. <laughs> well, you know that's. That's true back then. I mean, I remember very well that um, that's one of the things that frustrated me about college football at that time is you take a team like East Carolina, we're spoiled now. But when I was a kid, they'd have, like, what, guys, about three or four games on the whole day? Oh, Oh, yeah. 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 Back then? Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. Yeah. No, I'm watching. I'm watching these Carolina games in Florida. So, I mean, it's that's just how far it's come. I mean, I'm, I'm. Eight hours, eight and a half, nine hours away, and I can still see, you know, you see you games. <laughs> yeah, you can, yeah. you can, you can watch it on your phone now. And yeah, yeah. And back then, yeah. I was yeah. lucky to be able to get a transistor radio, <laughs> the AM dial, to be able to, like Bubba said, uh, you're yeah, talking about that, Bubba, with uh, being on the road. I remember many times trying to listen to East Carolina. You're Jeff Charles. And you hear a play, and and then all of a sudden you you lose the signal, like you were talking about, and and then you have to, then you try to like find out did they win the game? What happened? And right. like now you don't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah, right, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Now, guys, before we move on and talk some post ECU things, um, I did want to ask. I think. Amos, and so I believe you were on the team that went up to Penn State and nearly knocked those guys off. I think we lost 17 to 10. Was that 85, maybe? Yeah, that was 85, yeah. Okay, because yeah. I just remember I, I I was asking my dad about that game, uh, just uh, exactly how close were we to knock, knocking off the Nittany Lions that day? Man, it, it, it was it was going – well, first of all, when we, when, we, when we got there, I guess we were so in, in awe because that was like one of the largest – stadiums that we've ever played in 
Right. And 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 when we came in, I guess they had a whiteout day because it was white all through that. It was probably eighty five, ninety thousand people there. Wow. And I, and I tell people to this day, they were the most polite crowd <laughs> that I've ever played in front of. They were nice to us. They were saying hi to us. They were being nice. I mean, they weren't throwing it because they thought they were really going to just, like, pound us into the ground. And one thing I also remember is that the stands were so close to our sideline. I mean, you could really – they could really just reach over the balcony and, and touch us. That's how close the, that's how close the fans were. Yeah, I, 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 I'm sorry, huh? I was going. I was just saying. I I noticed that on TV watching games from Happy Valley, uh, how how the seating's right on top of the bleachers. I mean, right right on top of the right on top of the team benches. Oh my! Yeah, they were right there, and 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 like I said, they were they they were dressed in all white, and they were just being nice to us. And then all of a sudden, we started, you know, giving them giving them some uh, a, a game. Then all of a sudden, they wanted to start interacting with us at that point, and it was like they. <laughs> And it, they weren't so happy at that point, but we had a great game. Uh, we had a great game plan. The guys played together, and we just believed that we could actually win that game. And then that was probably uh, one of the most exciting games that I've been part of at, at East Carolina. And that makes it a point, the, the very fact that it seems like to me the one thing that I'm hearing from the different players of 83 team, and Terry, uh, how prepared were you guys with Ed Emery? <laughs> Uh, what 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 was Big Ed saying? Perfect practice, make perfect. Yes, mm-hmm. sir. That was it. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect <laughs> practice. And, and and I still do that today. Whatever. Yeah. Perfect practice. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Perfect practice. Make, make sure we're prepared, man. He, he, oh, yeah. he had a good game plan. He made sure to, you know we we knew what our assignments was, and if we didn't get right. it right, we're gonna do it again. And then it just when we hit that road, we were ready to go. Ready to go. And talk about talk about the. Uh, I know that some people, and I'm not trying to beat up on uh, Coach Montgomery, but it was well known the practices, and I was there last year. So I can. How hard was practice for you guys, oh like God. mentally, physically, oh. emotionally? Oh my God! <laughs> Don't bring that up. That's like a oh flashback. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry That's if I get really anybody PTSD. Really right? Oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> that made me tired right now just <laughs> thinking about it. Oh my God! Yeah, we had three of those. Three of those, man. Yeah. Yes. It well, was three well, of those at East at Greenville. Yeah. Well, it's that funny week. because we had four days, huh? We had four days, man. Yeah, that's what I was told. And yeah. Had oh, yeah. Memory, yeah, four days, and then now it's just one a day. <laughs> like yeah. a oh, my God. Really? Yeah. What, what I, was I, that? I, yeah. What was that? What was that, what? Uh, that, uh, that, uh, that test we had to do? Ten tens? Oh. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Like you had to run 100 yards, 100 yards, 10 times, and then yeah. 90, 80, yeah. 70, yeah. 60, 60. Yeah. Oh yeah, we God, started at the hundred yard line and we had to work our way back <laughs> ten yards yeah. at a time. Yeah, I'm and out if, of breath just listening to y'all. <laughs> and if one guy, if one guy, right. we back we it did up. it by positions. It's time yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we did it by positions too. And if one guy didn't make it, it's you had to do it over again. Oh <laughs> right. Yeah. I think if somebody we, somebody put one on uh, put the somebody had went back and, and captured the. the practice schedule and put it on Facebook, I thought like maybe a month ago, and it showed that we started at 7, we had to eat breakfast, and then we went to practice, and then we came back, practice, we ate, practice, ate, practice, I mean, it was crazy. <laughs> and then you go to bed, right? Yeah, you go to bed, and you wake up, and, you, and we did that all over again. It all over again. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Yeah, man. Crazy. Yeah. Those four words you always enjoy hearing as a player, hands on the line. <laughs> Oh, oh Lord. my God! <laughs> yeah. Hands on the line. Oh Lord! <laughs> oh my God! What about conditioning? How good it y'all had to? Y'all must have been in tremendous condition through four Coach days. Yeah. Coach oh, entry. Oh, for, oh yeah. fourth quarter was like first quarter with, uh, with right. us. Right. It was oh, yeah. good. Oh yeah. Oh, it was good yeah. fourth quarter. Yeah. Hey, you were know, talking about Coach Gentry, man. That's head coach. Man. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to ask about him and. 
Like, what did you guys do to prepare for, I mean, my God, four days? I just can't ima- I can't wrap my head around that. Uh, how can you prepare tough, for yeah. four days? Yeah. Right. You can't. You can't. That's mental yeah. tough. Yeah. That's okay. Exactly. Yeah, you can't prepare. Yeah, you can't. But you got to It's more of a mental challenge than anything yeah. else. I thought. Yeah, that. yeah. Uh, you know, you, we're we're what seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty years old. You know, yeah. and, and and physically we could handle it, but mentally was was a test. I think that's what every every big deal was is like mm-hmm. testing us yeah, mental game. You know, yeah. to see how, how we how we react exactly like Stefan said. Just what yeah. kind of mistakes you make when you're tired. You know, yeah, that's you're, right. you're, yeah. you eliminate your mistakes when you're tired. What can you do in that fourth quarter when the other team is yeah. tired and we yeah. and we still got our win? So that was, yeah. I think that was what that four day was all about. Yeah, it's like Coach Rick Smith said. I mean, he he was on Coach Holt's staff for for five seasons, and then Coach Russ staff for I guess three seasons, and then uh, also Coach Moe's first year, and had over forty years in the business. and And he always said, he said. He said, "If you're not in shape, you can't be mentally tough." No, you can't. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's exactly <laughs> right. One of that's the things right. that I want to ask you guys about is uh, certainly um, again, it sounds like I'm anti Montgomery on this podcast. But anyway, um, one of the things I mentioned we were talking about practice, and I want to get your thing. Uh, it comes down to the fundament- fundamentals of the game, and I know Bubba, you played and coached. And I've coached football. I didn't play it, but. Um, to me, blocking and tackling, and how do you think, uh, what did you guys, were there any drills you guys, I know I'm being a football nerd here, but were there any drills you guys did to practice how to tackle and the correct way to tackle? Oh, yeah, God. Speak on that one. Speak on that one. Oh, my God. Yes, we've done uh, plenty of drills on that one, and yeah, some drills we've done was like just half, half speed walkthrough, and I remember, I, I remember this this one practice. Oh my god! This guy, we was doing a walk through tackle drill, and I'm walking, and he doing the tackling. All of a sudden, he came at me like it was full go gear. It was full go. Oh my and, god! And he cut he cut me at the bottom of my eye, and I had. To <laughs> I had to go to the uh, the urgent care, man, and get stitched up, man, because of that drill right there. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. wow. <laughs> I can't remember the dude. I can't remember the DB name, man. I can't remember his name, though. But he, he wasn't a starter. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. They probably trying Evidently. to take you out. Evidently not. They trying to take Evidently. me out, man. Yeah. <laughs> he trying to take yeah. me out. <laughs> Wow. I mean, we had we had the chin straps on, but and everything, because it was a walk through, and I think we I think we was in shorts. We was in shorts that day, shorts and yeah. t shirt. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Forming up. Yeah. Oh yeah, we 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 was fundamentally sound, man. We were fundamentally sound. I mean, obviously, with the way that you guys played and uh, the record speaks for itself, but that's something I think that. Um, Coach Houston, and I'm trying to tie it back to you guys at 83 too, but he talks about habits. Yeah. How was that, Coach mm-hmm. Emery, about habits? Was he very, he sounds like he was very attention to detail. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. From, from Definitely the kicking that. game, from the kicking game to offense, defense. I mean, uh, yeah, definitely attention to detail on pretty much every aspect of the game. And, and made sure. I mean, and we he tested us on it. You know, he made sure that we we were ready. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, exactly. That's one. Yeah. Like Bubba, I was saying, you know, that uh, we were just uh, Bubba and I've talked about this before, but and I know Kyle would agree. We wanted to have Coach Emery on, and obviously he passed away before we started the podcast. But he would be yeah. one that if we could go back in yeah. time to the time machine. Man, you better believe Ooh. he would be on the podcast with us. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you have any funny? Do you have any funny stories with Coach um, Emery that things he did to maybe you guys or to other uh, players or? Oh my God. <laughs> One you can tell on the podcast. Coach was, man, Coach was uh, I, I got one. I got one. <laughs> I mean, it's not about neither one of us, but it was 
I know it was uh, one of the, one of the players. He was a linebacker. I'm not gonna call his name, <laughs> but he he was a, he was a physical specimen. I mean, I mean, he head to toe chiseled. I mean, arms, legs, back. I mean, just to bitch press the world. And I remember one day in practice, we were going through a drill, we're tackling drill, and he called him, the guy came up, and I guess he whipped on the tackle. But he called the guy's name. He said, such and such, you got a body like Tarzan, but you play like James. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I think my brother probably know who I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, okay. But, yeah, he, I mean, and that, and that was the I mean, this was like a group drill where it was, you know, 11 on 11. Practice, he, he blew that whistle. He was in his tower. He was in his, I don't know if you guys ever remember that, that tower that Ed used to stand yeah, up. Oh, yeah, that with. big old tower, yeah. They used yeah. to call him Donkey Kong because he used to go up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, that's funny. That's yeah. one of my favorite video games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that's what they used to call Ed. He was in that tower. He was coming down like Donkey Kong. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they used to. Yeah, they used to. <laughs> They used to mock him how he talked. They used to mock him how he talked, man, so much, man. He oh, yeah. he always talked with his hand. He always told your hand. Oh, my God. You know, his hand. Yeah. Well, see, I know. Now, was uh, anybody ever brave figure. enough to do that impersonation <laughs> of Coach Emery to his face? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. He's a man. Okay. Okay. man. Yeah, he's a ghost, man. It was, it was funny, man. Who used to do the impression? Was that John Floyd that done the impression? Or yeah. I can't remember which one Which one of the offensive line. I think John quarterback. I think John quarterback. John, John Williams. Quarterback. I John, John Williams. Williams. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and and you win, and you can do yeah. you can do impressions of the head right. coach, right? Right, right, yeah. Especially eighty three, yeah, we could, yeah, we, <laughs> yeah. We got that's what I, that's like. I remember three seasons. I remember uh, see, seeing some players for Alabama doing impersonations of uh, oh, Nick yeah. Saban. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, of course, oh, yeah. Because they win it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bet you they weren't doing it in his first year when they were seven and six. No, no. no. Oh, no. <laughs> like, or after this year's yeah. uh, national championship right. loss. Oh, yeah. Blowout to right. Clemson, I bet they weren't right. doing yeah. it. Yep. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what, do you guys about, what do you think about the uh, salary now? You know, Dabo, which I'm a huge fan oh, of. Oh, my God. Is that amazing? I mean, oh, my gosh. Just, what were the yeah, salaries? Do you know what the salary was back in the day when you guys played with the uh, college coaches? <laughs> out, out of curiosity? Uh, well, um, yeah. 40,000 40, maybe? Oh wow! I have no idea, man. And he just got a. He just got what a was it nine million dollars? Yeah, Bubba. Wow, yeah, he, yeah, he got yeah, it. N- yeah. nine point three million was what it averaged out wow, to. Uh, right. ten, yeah. ten, ten years, years million, ten right. years, ninety three million. I, I think yeah. right now it's wow. right around eight point two, eight point three, and then by wow, the end right. of the deal, it gets up to ten million plus. <laughs> crazy, crazy. Wow, guy, crazy. I, I, you know, I guys, I can't. I mean. It, it, I, I I can't I can't grip I can't get myself around. I mean these guys these guys are making more than the professional head coaches are making. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and I, I for the life of me I can't for the life of me I can't get my I can't get my head around you know around that because they because these athletes man these athletes Ooh. what they you know what they go through, and I know we haven't talked postseason yet, man. But just, but just yeah. going back to school, man, and these and these cats. I went to when I went back to school. I went to you know at, at um, Georgia State, and I was in class with some of these athletes at Georgia State. You know, and it just threw me all the way back to East Carolina. You know, going to class and, and lifting weights in the morning or the afternoon, going to practice, doing your homework and setting your play. Man, I mean, it's man. I was like, oh, well, how how did I um, how did I make it through? How did I make it through? And then was able to get drafted. I, I have man, it was it's amazing. And then for them to, you know, and I I mean, I like Dabo. I love you know Saban. I, I mean, what they're doing, but 
but for the massive money they're getting, I, I just I just don't understand. I really don't. Yeah. You know. Yeah. What's amazing I is know. I think I don't know what you guys think, but I think that Dabo being a Alabama alum, um, sure. there was some speculation that after Saban has a few more yeah, years left in the tank, Dabo. And yeah. then there would be Dabo, and I think, man, uh, Clemson sent a message to him. Yeah, uh, he's not right. going anywhere for a right. little while. <laughs> right. Right. The, the right. buyout, yeah. I'm, the buyout's yeah. even greater if it's Alabama. Right. Yeah. Don't yeah. Have to. Yeah. And, and, and what yeah. I look at from that aspect too, with you know, you were talking about these guys making more than the NFL coaches. Think about these franchises; they got to they got to pay each individual player. In addition to the position, now in, in in the college level, you paying you paying coaches, you're not paying those players, right? And and some of these right. schools um, are, are are their businesses. I mean, you, you talk about Alabama and Clemson; they probably bring in just as much money as a as yeah. a Dallas Cowboys team or you know a New England Patriots team that's won championships. So that money is is is, is going to those coaches and to the institution. Versus Bubba. Yeah, Bubba, you know, and we were just talking about that last week, a different subject matter. Look at Texas making uh, guys $215 million, That's the profit. $215 million a year for their athletic program. I mean, is that yeah. crazy or what? Yeah. Wow. That's, that's how they wow. can pay. That's how they can pay a, a guy like that, you know? Wow. And, and then, and then the other thing you look at, the other thing you look at, guys, is you look at, and, and as you follow the, you know, the BSC man, the BCS, I'm sorry, BCS, and you know, and, you know, and you see, you know, uh, you know, the four, te- you know, the four teams that are, you know, that are there, and really when you think about, they like said two, two hundred fifteen million. I mean, what? I mean, what? I mean, what other programs are even going to even come close to that? To be able to be a competitor, I mean, how can you, I mean, how, how can you compete with that? You know, yeah. what I mean, I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, you got two hundred and fifteen million in surplus. Yeah. To be able to, I mean, to be able to get you know equipment and you know, yeah. I mean, you know, nutrition and you know yeah. for you know for your you know for your players and and first class everything. How can you how can you compete? How can you how do you compete compete with that yeah. when you come to recruiting? The tree, hey, you know, I mean, to to elaborate on your point, like like in Clemson's case, yeah. they built a football building that has a slide in it. Yeah, they, yeah. they have they have slides, barber shops. I mean, what? what? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Right. That's, that's what I said. You can't compete with that. If, if you got a number yeah. one recruit in the state of South Carolina, oh, and Clemson comes at him, and then you got a, a you got a a, a a foreman that comes at him. Come on, man. Like, you can't compete with that. I mean, with the facilities alone, you you can. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, and and you and you continue to watch the uh, the BCS. I mean, it's, you're going to. I mean, you you will see, you know, you will see it, and you you know, you read about it all the time, and you know, and um, you know, and and then you hear, you know, you hear conversations, you hear, you know, coaches, and you read stuff, and you know, you read stuff in the in the sports, especially when it comes, you know, come time for college football, man, and you just. You know, I mean, I mean, what they just, I just, you know, just reading, you know, just reading in, in the paper here, you know, a couple of days ago about the draft and, you know, in the top, you know, top tier teams, you know, top tier teams and how many, you know, how many, um, you know, young men was, you know, was drafted, you know, drafted out of, you know, out of those top, you know, out of those teams, you know, I mean, in the draft out of the three, the two, what, 260, 260 players, you yeah. know, I mean, you know, Alabama, you know, Clemson, you know, you know, those type of, you know, those type of programs, you know. So, yeah. Uh, Clemson had three defensive linemen selected in the first 19 picks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. The rich get richer, right? Yeah. Right, right. And then, and then go, and then go, and then, you know, and go, re- see, go research that, go, you know, go do your work and research that on how, you know, on how these, you know, how these guys begin you know, to, you know, to get to that level in the training and, the you know, the strength and conditioning coach, you know, you, I mean, they make they make a couple million, you know, just as strength and conditioning coaches, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. you know, nutritionist. You know, oh, yeah. nutritionist. I mean, yeah, oh, yeah, you know, I mean, you know, 
I mean, and then, you know, you hear, <laughs> now, nah, that's, that's what yeah. I heard. You know, this is what I heard. I heard they got some tutors that, some tutors that, um, that you know, that um, definitely take care of those Alabama kids down there in class and stuff. So that's what I heard. I, you know, I was, <laughs> <laughs> nothing would, hey, man, nothing would, su- you're dealing with the SEC, nothing personal. would surprise me, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't know that exactly. personal, but, you know, but yeah, yeah. So, but how, you know, how can you, you know, how can, but how can you compete with that, though? You know, I mean, the, you know, but um, yeah, no, guys, um, kind of. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, but I, I was just, you know, I was just gonna say, I just um, and um, just being, I was really amazed just being down, you know, down East Carolina. I haven't been down in a long time, but you know, just amazing looking at the, um, you know, the campus and facilities that uh, you know, that that East Carolina is putting up and building, and you know, um, you know, with themselves trying to, you know, trying to. You know, trying to compete. You know, trying to compete and trying to, you know, trying to have a, you know, a first class, you know, first class organization um, down there that that will that will rival, you know, that will rival those, you know, uh, definitely those, um, you know, ACC and SEC teams. You know, so uh, definitely, definitely hats off to them. Yeah. What I was going to say is um, a moment ago we were talking about haircuts and barber shops. So um, let's talk about uh, your transition, Stefan, from ECU and talk about getting drafted. And uh, I know you played for the L.A. Raiders. And and then um, you had a heck of a haircut, um, which is where I was going with that. Uh, I think I believe when we were uh, lining up this interview that you told me that was for a Monday night game against the Seahawks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. Beast, but yeah, but um, yeah, but just talk about the experience of get of getting drafted and then your your yeah. pro experience. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was um, yeah, it was a, a tremendous experience. Um, you know, uh, company East Carolina went to you know was invited to the um the combine, uh, nineteen eighty five, and um was there. It was funny because I was I ended up um. You know, because I ended, I ended up my season, my my career, or actually my career at East Carolina, as a, um, you know, I played, I was, I was recruited as a running back, um, and then after a few years, um, Art, Art, um, what is it, Art Coach Art name, uh, Art Baker, in. Baker, Art Baker came in and and switched them, um, uh, switched them to our formation, so I ended up being a, a split in, and. Um, and then, um, and then um, one of our safeties got, you know, injured, you know, and uh, and he called me, Ricky Nichols, and uh, and Henry Williams Humpchess, uh, Gizmo in the office. He said one of y'all got to switch, <laughs> and so <laughs> and so it, uh, it, you know, switching me, you know, but I, it, when it was already determined I was going to be switched. So so I ended up, man, I ended up in my uh, my senior year playing, you know, playing um, free safety. Free safety um, at East Carolina, and so um, and so it's funny. I went to I went to um, the combine as a wide receiver, you know. So that's where I played most. End up playing most of my time, and so um, um, so that was you know that was a great experience. I was actually there with um with um Jerry Rice. Me and Jerry Rice, we we um we came out uh, eighty five drafted the same year. Um, and I thought I was gonna get the better hand going to East. I mean, going to to the Raiders, getting drafted to the Raiders, and he went to San Francisco. Um, and you know, we, you know, the Raiders just came off '84, you know, championship season, you know, uh, beating the, the Redskins. And so, uh, so I thought I would had the upper hand, but uh, <laughs> he, ended up, he ended up getting all the rings. So, but, uh, but yeah, but it was a yeah, it was an awesome experience, man. Awesome experience, uh, you know, at home. You know, at home with the family. You know, by the, you know, by the phone. And um, you know, my agent was, he was um, letting me know that probably most likely, um, looking like I'll probably get, um, you know, drafted around the third, you know, somewhere in the third round. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that was that was um, that was real cool, man. Getting you know, getting that phone call, man. Um, talking to Willie Brown and. Um, and um, Steve Ortmeyer, and which was the GM, and Willa Brown was the, the defensive back coach, and um, and um, of course the, the the famous infamous um Al Davis. I was able to talk to him, and and um, 
you know, and uh, they drafted me in the third round and and uh, went out to you know went out there to, to L.A. Went out there to L.A. man and you know it was it was you know glorious time for the you know for the family and just you know just awesome for you know for for the city half point and you know in um, Gifford County where you know we went to school man and so we just it was just uh, it was amazing it was just it, it was amazing and um, played for the Raiders. I uh, played for the Raiders for five years, and and then um, ended up being released from the Raiders, and and um, played in Cleveland, played in Cleveland for for a season, for a season there, and then um, ended up um, had a, a terrible season there, and in the dog pound, and ended up getting a you know first in, you know first out, you know that you that you get, and what happens, and so got picked up by by Miami, playing with um. Went there with um, uh, Dan Marino, Dan Marino, oh, yeah. and um, legendary Shell um, Sheila. I'm sorry, she's a Don Sheila. Yeah, Don Sheila, and mm-hmm. play, you know, play for him. Yeah, the, uh, two games, two regular season game, and two playoff games. Yeah, so that was that was uh, yeah, that, that was that was a good that was a good little run there. But but being there with those two two legends, man, that was. Yeah, that was that was real interesting. That was real interesting. But um, but yeah, yeah, man, it was it was, it was awesome. It was awesome, uh, awesome, uh, yeah. So yeah, you uh, you actually, uh, I'm I'm a little bit older than the guy, so I actually, am, I just turned forty six, so I'm a little bit uh, a little bit younger younger than you guys, but at the same time, a lot closer than the boys who were born in nineteen eighty and nineteen eighty one. <laughs> yeah, I'll be 38 here on June 7th. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> Don't y'all, Bubba. Let me call y'all. Dude. Yeah, I'm saying <laughs> yeah, not. Not throwing a, that in anybody's face or anything. Just stating a fact. Right. Right. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Gotcha. But no, no uh, that, uh, I wish I I wish I had a dollar for every time I watched that 1983 highlight film growing up. Oh those, those those were my first uh, memories of East Carolina football because uh, even though I attended games, uh, I guess probably prior to that in 81, 82, when I was too young to remember it, the first things that I remember were that 83 team. Yeah, and the yeah, fact I got that the video, I got that video. Yeah, I got the, I got oh, the, yeah. the DVD. I got the DVD. So, oh, and yeah. that's up for people listening. That's actually up on. Isn't that up on YouTube now, Bubba? Then we. It is. Uh, that's it's, where I watch. It's up there in about three or four parts. Um, so okay. yeah, uh, okay. we'll put that on our social media, and I'll and I'll. Uh, oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. And we'll send it send it to you guys. Uh, I'll text yeah, it. Yeah, big time. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that that's actually that was uh, my memory serves me right. Didn't some of the other players say that '83 that that was actually made as a recruiting tool by Ed mm-hmm. Emery? Is my memory serving me on that? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Oh yes, sir. Yeah. Oh yeah. Any, yeah. I mean, it, some a video like that serves multiple purposes. Yeah, you're you're um, documenting the tremendous season that was, mm-hmm. but you, you're certainly going to show it to those guys you're recruiting. Exactly. <laughs> Especially <laughs> as good as y'all were, my God. I mean, I mean why would when you, you, when why you're would you that one. Yeah. That was a show. That was a show. When you're that close yeah. to competing for for a national mm-hmm. title. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I know yeah, the other good. brothers, uh, but you, know, you guys actually, uh, Cal, you actually went to Hamilton, right, Calvin? Yes. But I was um, I was uh in the uh, supplemental draft that year in '85. Oh, wow. Okay. And I went to the Cowboys um, for a trial and uh, ended up being the last DB that they released. And after that, that's when I went to uh, uh, Hamilton Ticats. So I played uh, five games over there at uh, Canadian Ball. And, you know, as, a, as an American over in, over in Canada, if you're not starting, you get, you, you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> the money and the money's not good in it, right? The money's not good, not like Oh, no, no, no. You got to the best thing to do when you over there is have your money uh in Canadian dollars. And pretty much spend your money in Canada <laughs> cuz when you convert it, 
you're only going to get about yeah. half of that. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. But, but I, I mean, yeah. you know, I still, you know, enjoyed the experience, and I always had in my mind not everybody gets an opportunity like this. Right. I mean, yeah. no matter how short it was, I still enjoyed it and appreciate it, and thank God for the opportunity that I had. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Not everybody yeah. gets that. That's the thousands of college players. Not everybody gets the opportunities you guys did. Exactly. So, uh, right. very blessed. And uh, before we let you yep. guys go, can you tell everybody uh, what you guys are up to now? <laughs> All right, I'm the oldest, and I'm the oldest, and I think I'm going first. And I'll probably have to get up a lot earlier than both of these guys right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah, you do. But. But uh, right now, I mean, I'm I'm a I'm a truck driver, and I That's love it. That's what I'm talking about. I yeah. love it. I love every minute of it. That is my sanctuary when I get in that truck. And uh, <laughs> I've been doing I've been doing it for 15 plus years now. Oh. And uh, so I I mean, it's just something that I enjoy doing. I didn't know I I, I didn't know I. I didn't know that I was going to love to drive the way I am, but I love it. And thanks to uh, one of my brothers also that was a truck driver, and uh, rest in peace, Brother Lewis. Uh, he really mm-hmm. convinced me to do this because, I mean, I was driving trucks, but I was driving a straight truck, and I had my Class A license. And he always told me, what are you doing with a Class A license driving a straight truck? <laughs> I mean, it finally it made sense. Uh, yeah. Uh, Step up to the plate, right? Make more money driving yeah. an 18 wheeler. <laughs> is the money, uh, not to ask you dollars and cents, but is the money still good like it used to be because of the gas? I know the gas is not as bad as it was at one point, but it still it seems like it's climbing up now. Well, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say no, because back then I know back then I used to be able to run a couple of trips for for the week and bring home over a thousand dollars easily after tax. Well, wow. yeah, and it's like now you got to work harder just to bring home over a thousand dollars after tax. So, you know. But I was uh, over the road uh, for 10-plus years, but now I'm local, and, you know, I'm home every night, and I love it. And now, you know, I can get involved with other things, and my main hobby now is golf and bowling. (laughs) Oh, well. Yeah, now that I'm in Florida, it's golf now and then bowling. (laughs) What if uh, what about you, Stefan? What are you uh what are you up to these days? You know, put the bowling ball down, man. Bowl like he's <laughs> insane, insanity or something. But um but yeah, yeah. Um yeah, right now I mean finally went back to um finally been back to school and um and finished up um uh finished up my degree coursework um at um Georgia State. Georgia State okay. University, yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, did that um, uh, health and physical education program, and uh, and uh, be graduating here in May next week, next week Thursday. So, that's so uh, awesome. Yeah, so did that. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Did that track, man. Did that track, and uh, just I mean, you know, was applying for, you know, applying for coaching jobs, you know, um, here last ten years ago, and uh, even with you know, Division One, six years of, you know, NFL football, playing football still. You know, they still want that degree from those colleges. Yeah, so, yeah, so um, wife encouraged me to, to get back and go back to school and and uh, and finish up and she tutored me and work with me and, um, you know, and um, it paid, um, stuck with it and paid off. Yeah, man. So, yeah, yeah, so excited about that and, you know, looking to, you know, to make a transition now, look at some different options on, you know, what to be able to do, you know. Are you looking like high school? Like, 
Are you looking like high school mm-hmm. or a college like Bubba's in coaching high school, right? And middle well, middle school, right, Bubba? What about uh, so? Um, well, good luck to you. And I know that we, uh, our good friend Brandon yeah, Simmons, yeah. we've got a whole bunch of people that are coaches, yeah. so we'll look out for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. So just, yeah, yeah. Just trying to, you know, trying to look and see what, um, you know, see what fits and what, you know, what the, um, you know, what's the next move. Cause I, 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 I have um, post. Um, I actually posted Dunwoody. Um, I'm here in Georgia. We live here in Georgia, so I, okay. I did coach at Dunwoody High School and I posted at um. Um, Stone Mountain High School for oh, yeah. you know for a few years because you can be a you know you can be a lay coach you don't have to be a teacher right but you can get your lay coach certification so I've had my lay coach certification since um, 2006 yeah so yeah, yeah I heard train, they, you know and train kids too yeah so. our good friend Terry Gallagher uh, of course was a high school coach yeah yeah Terry in his yeah, home state yeah. yeah Terry he uh, yeah, he yep. talks all the time about it. And then I have a good friend of mine. I'm trying to think of the name yeah. of the school. He's at Jim Bob Bryant that we graduated together in 91 as yeah. East Carolina graduate. He's down there in a big-time big boy high school football. So uh, that. what about you, Amos? What are you up to? Well, I'm going on my uh, my 18th year here in, in uh, Orlando, Florida. And uh, I've uh, done a lot of different sales things, sales background. But uh, actually, I'm a sales service rep. For a uniform company, um, Cintas. Oh and, yeah, uh, yeah. So I'm I'm a self service rep for them. Um, going on my going on my second year, I did teach uh, um, elementary PE for for six years, which was which was a really fun job. I did that for six years uh, at a local uh, elementary school, and uh, got out of that. And then now, like I said, I'm I'm working. Uh, for Cintas as a sales uh, sales service rep. That's really cool. Well, you guys, uh, we kept you way too long, but we wanted to honor you guys and not to have a quick podcast because uh, you guys are tremendous. And um, thank you for all the planting the seeds for us, those of us that came after you guys. In fact, I'm in the uh, Beach Bowl to Liberty Bowl years, uh, 91 to 95 is my time. So, okay. but uh, you guys paved the way for us, Absolutely. just like the the teams before you guys. So, uh, yeah. means a lot, and and uh, I guess we're now everybody's paying it forward. So, thank you very much yes, for sir. your yes, your time, and I hope yes, you guys sir. will come back to uh, a game or games yes. plural, and you oh, come back, and absolutely. we'd love to meet you, and uh, definitely, uh, I know Coach Houston and all the staff want to meet you guys as well. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you guys for having us on, man. We we definitely appreciate it. Oh yeah, I'll definitely yeah, appreciate absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, and we'll definitely stay in touch. Definitely tell you, stay in touch and make that um make that trip. Make that trip yeah. back down there. Yeah, we got a lot of big games coming yes, up. We need all the we need all yeah. the help we can get. Maybe yeah. we can put you guys out there on the field and they'll never notice. <laughs> all hands on deck. <laughs> oh yeah, they'll they'll notice. <laughs> they would notice. Only way you gonna put only way you gonna put me. Only way you gonna put me. <laughs> right. uh, I, I can train them up. I can train them now. I can train. I can work with them. Uh, and train them, but, yeah, but I, can, I, can, I can sit back and watch them better though. Yeah. So exactly. Yeah, but, yeah. You had you guys had your time and had yeah. fun, and now you get yeah. to enjoy it, right? Yeah. There you yeah, go. No, no yeah, more four yeah, days. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You guys, yeah. Appreciate you guys very much. Hope you have a yeah. great night, and we'll still uh, right. Bubba and I will stay in touch with you. Okay. All right. Appreciate yeah. you guys. Appreciate yes, you. All right. All right. Have a good night, guys. What a great look at Hired Football 1983. That special team with Ed Emery and the Adams brothers were so generous of their time, and we had so much fun. Bubba and I did. Kyle is actually a little bit under the weather, so we had a chance to the two of us had a chance to sit back and listen to them talk stories and. Tell great times at East Carolina and Greenville and what it was like back in 1983 with that very special team. Again, going 8-3 and three on the season, number 20 in the nation, one of the best East Carolina teams we've ever had. So a very special look back. Uh, we have other archives, three other previous editions of our 1983 series you can get into archives. Don't forget you can listen to this podcast anywhere, uh, your favorite podcast, and we'll do that also, by the way, want to mention you can find us on Facebook, like our Facebook page. We're on Twitter. Follow us at the Sports OBJ. It's, uh, it's at the Sports Objective for Instagram, and we are also 
to remind you of our email address as well, and that's thesportsobj at gmail.com. And for Bubba Rosenbaum and for our very own Kyle from LaGrange Barber, I'm Dave Richmond for the Sports Objective Podcast. You've been listening to the Sports Objective Podcast. Join us next time as the guys will be objective, and the objective is sports.